This lecture is presented by John Moffat of Open Tuition. For other free lectures, visit opentuition.com. All right, I'm going to uh, work through the um, September, December 2015 paper F5 exam, where, as I'm sure you appreciate, uh, rather than publish each exam in full, they've published a mixture of uh, some questions from September, some questions from December. Uh, they no longer publish the multiple choice questions, so I obviously can't go through them. Um, so we're going to go through section B, and first of all, question number one. Uh, well, as always, uh, look at the requirements first. Uh, he says, A, briefly describe the main steps involved in deriving a target cost. Well, that's very, very much textbook learning. Hopefully, you've been through and you know what the main steps are, and in a minute, that should be a very easy three marks. Part B is a bit more testing your understanding of what's happening. Explain any difficulties which may be encountered and any benefits which may arise when implementing target costing at uh, CECO. So do appreciate part B uh, is wanting two things. Um, explain any difficulties. We'll read the information shortly and um, have a think what difficulties there may be. And separately, um, explain any benefits which may arise. Uh, obviously, it's uh, uh, entirely written. There's no arithmetic, which a lot of people hate. Uh, but in fact, it should be relatively easy and reasonably quick to be able to get good marks here. Anyway, part A, and because part A is textbook, uh, you don't really need to have read the information. Uh, we'll read it later, but for part A, what are the steps involved in deriving the target cost? Well, I'm not going to give a full target costing lecture. You know, there are lectures on the website. If you haven't watched them, do watch them. But the basic idea is that instead of letting the cost drive the selling price, with target costing, there are basically three main steps. We decide on a reasonable selling price. I'm not going to write it all out in full. I mean, um, just waste time, it's boring. Write a bit more um, in the exam itself and do read the examiner's answer. But the, the first step, decide on a selling price. You'd look to see what price competitors were charging. Um, decide what a reasonable price is uh, to attract uh, the sort of demand we want. Uh, we also need to decide on an objective. Again, if you've watched watch the lectures, you, you'll appreciate there's no rule here. We do it any way we want. Uh, maybe um, we want to make... Um, a standard profit on cost. Maybe we want to make a standard profit on selling price. Maybe we want a certain return on capital employed. But we decide what our objective is. You know, maybe 10% margin, 10% profit on the selling price. And then we put the two together. And using the two, having decided on the price and the profit we want, we calculate Uh, the cost needed to achieve the objective. And that is the target cost. So all that said, I'm not going to give a full lecture on it. You see, we may have decided, oh, we'll have a selling price of $100. That's a reasonable uh, price to charge having looked at the uh, competition and so on. We may have decided we want a 20% uh, profit on sales. Maybe that's our profit objective. Uh, and therefore, on 100 selling price, we want $20 profit. Put the two together, and to achieve that, the cost would have to be no more than 80. If we can make sure the cost is 80 or less, then we'll achieve our objective, and that'll be the target. They're the three main steps in actually deriving the target cost, which actually is all the question asks for. But 
may as well uh, uh, just continue the relevance of it. That having got the target, silly example where 80, we then estimate the actual cost Maybe when we do our costings, we find it's going to cost 85 or something. And if the actual cost is higher than the target, the difference we call a cost gap. The cost gap is the difference between the actual estimated cost and the target cost. And so again, if the actual cost we estimated was going to be 85. We'd say we have a cost gap, 85 minus 80, a cost gap of $5. And what I'm not going to write is that our, our object then will be to look for ways of eliminating that gap, of getting the estimated cost down to the target of 80. However, strictly on what she said, or what the question asked for, it's only really those first three steps. Uh, that'll get the three marks. Anyway, that's taken me quite a while just for three marks, but appreciate I was doing more than I intended there. I was, um, to a certain degree, teaching target costing. As I said before, uh, in the exam itself, it should have been very much boom, 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 uh, without much thinking needed. Uh, what about part B, though? What difficulties, what benefits uh, for C Company. So let's now read the information. The Chemical Free Clean Company provides a range of environmentally friendly cleaning services to business customers, often providing a specific service to meet a client's needs. Its customers range from large offices and factories to specialist care wards at hospitals, where specialist equipment must be used and regulations adhered to. We offer both regular cleaning contracts and contracts for one-off jobs. For instance, its latest um, client was a chain of restaurants which employed them to produce, uh, to provide rather, an extensive clean of all their business premises after an outbreak of food poisoning. Uh, the cleaning market is very competitive. Although there are only a small number of companies providing a chemical-free service, C has always used cost plus pricing to determine the prices which it charged to customers. But recently, the cost of the cleaning uh, products has increased. It's meant that we've had to increase our prices, resulting in the loss of several customers to competing providers. The final start has heard of target costing. Could it be useful? Well, although there's a lot to read there, in fact, the examiner has given all the clues, really, uh, to the answer that's expected for Part B. Um, to a certain extent, it's textbook. Again, if you've been through the uh, lectures, or our lectures, you'll know that when it's a service business, which this is, target costing becomes somewhat harder. But again, the, 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 the question does give the clues. Uh, first of all, the difficulties that may be encountered Now, as usual, I'm not going to write out in full here to take too long and be boring. I know I keep saying the same thing, but do read the examiner's answer and learn from it and appreciate the examiner writes more than is expected. But the main points here, the main difficulties, are really target costing is most easy to implement, most useful, when you're making lots of identical products or delivering lots of identical services. You know, and you can say, all right, for this product, my, my example, a reasonable price is 100. Or for this service, a reasonable price is 100. But the problem when it's a service business and the problem with chemical free clean, um, if you look in the first paragraph, uh, one, two, three, four, the fourth line down, we offer both regular cleaning contracts and contracts for one-off jobs. And that's where we have the problem, that for regular contracts, well, maybe they are similar services and therefore it might not be too bad to implement target uh, costing. 
But the big problem is these one-off jobs. And the reason it's a problem is that each job is going to be different. And therefore, there'd be no standard selling price. And that's what makes it extremely difficult to apply target costing. I mean, a lot of work doing each job separately or costing out each job separately. Uh, uh, we, it is unlikely to be feasible. Uh, and the example there, the food poisoning. They wanted an extensive clean after an outbreak of food poisoning. Well, that may be one job that only ever happens once. There's no standard price for it. Um, how do you get a standard price? Um, it's difficult to find competition, competitive prices. Competitive. Can't spell it. Prices for these one-off jobs. You know, so uh, how are you going to start the thing off? We need to know a reasonable selling price. Well, that is the, the big problem. So that's really enough for difficulties. I mean, again, turn it into sentences. But what about the potential benefits? The potential benefits, you see, at the moment, we're using cost plus. And so all that happens, all right, if our costs go up, fine, we add on a percent and we have a higher selling price. That's fine, provided, of course, we can get that selling price. But look here at the second paragraph. The cleaning market is very competitive. Although only a small number of companies provide chemical free. We've always used cost plus pricing to determine the prices. But recently, the cost of the cleaning products has increased. And therefore, with cost plus, we've increased our selling prices, resulting in the loss of several regular customers. And so that's the problem. You see, we're charging perhaps too much. And that's why we're losing customers. And so the real benefit of target costing is that certainly for our regular services, we've already said one-offs are a big problem, Instead of looking initially at the cost, we decide on what a reasonable price is. By looking at the competition, because we're chemical free, maybe we can charge a bit more, but we look at the competition and decide on a reasonable price. And then we look in order to achieve our profit how to get the cost down. But then we focus on reducing our costs. <coughs> and how might we? We can't go into detail here, we don't know enough. Um, but you know, the price of our cleaning products has gone up, so maybe um, look for other suppliers. I'd say, we, oh dear, I'm having problems spelling it, suppliers. Uh, we don't have enough information, but the sort of thing we do, look for other suppliers, see if we can buy the um, cleaning products cheaper. Perhaps argue with our existing suppliers, see if we can get a cheaper price. Uh, perhaps use the products more efficiently. You know, maybe when we come to investigate, maybe we're wasting um, cleaning materials. If we can cut down on waste, then again, that would reduce the cost. So although I've said turn these into sentences, uh, again, you, you're not expected to write great long paragraphs. The examiner's written more than's expected. And quite frankly, what I've written there in terms of difficulties, benefits, if I did make it a bit more of a sentence, uh, there's more than enough there to get most, if not all, of those seven marks. Okay, let's leave that one there. 
Now, that was question one.